Ever wonder exactly what goes behind the bullet physics in Ghost Recon Wildlands? We've cracked the door wide open and seen much of what goes into bullet trajectory. No, what you're seeing is not a glitch, and I'll explain it all right now. What's up guys, Dark Dally here playing Ghost Recon Wildlands, and today we're having a deep look into how the game calculates and projects bullet physics. I do want to note that we're testing this with tier mode turned off, as tier mode has no effect on bullet physics, and yeah, we tested that as well, because we really didn't want to have to deal with tier difficulty enemies during the testing. Okay, so my goal was to make a video guide for making long range sniper shots, so I teamed up with a friend so that I could spot his shots for him. What we found happening was that even at only 400 meters, he could not hit the target no matter how many times he shot. Now, I'd seen this before, but just chalked it up to one person trying to give directions to another person who was too far away who couldn't visually see his target. But this time, we noticed a pattern. Here's my screenshot of his bullet pattern from my screen. We noticed it instantly that the bullets were only hitting in a grid. Of course, this was only what my screen looked like. Here's his screenshot of the exact same bullet grouping. Notice his has more holes and they are spaced unevenly, whereas on my screen every bullet was going through the nearest hole forming a perfect grid. We realized immediately that one player cannot spot shots for another player, which I kind of already knew, but now we also had a lot more to look into. Why are the bullets forming a grid on my screen, whereas they hit accurately on his? How is this applied and what does it mean? We tested all day yesterday until we'd exhausted every variable we could think of, and here's how it works. The physics engine in Wildlands does seem to accurately calculate the bullet's trajectory for the shooter. If you fire on a target from any range, you'll see your bullet's arc, hit the target, and if you run up to see where you hit, your bullet holes will reflect where your bullets traveled, and enemies hit by them will be dead. But projecting this algorithm to observers is where it gets a little sloppy. Imagine you're in a dark room, and you have a flashlight with a small screen, like a grid, covering the end of it. Now if you shine it on the wall, it'll project this grid on the wall within the small circle of the light from the flashlight. Okay, so the farther you back away from the wall, with the flashlight shining on it, the bigger and bigger that circle of light will get, and the bigger and dimmer that grid will appear, right? That really is the best way to describe how Ghost Recon Wildlands projects its bullet physics algorithms to an observer. When my friend shoots at the wall, and then looks at where he hit, it all lines up, but when I watch him shoot, the bullets appear in a grid, because for me, the game is just approximating where they hit, snapping to the nearest grid point. And the farther away he is, the more it estimates and the larger the grid becomes. This applies to the bullet's travel trajectory as well. Observing the arc of his bullet from various ranges, the arc to me became more and more angular. Okay, so at long ranges, this means that he can have misses which look like hits on my screen and hits that look like misses to me. I'll explain that in a minute here. So anyway, finding this grid pattern led us to wonder, who's seeing the correct bullet pattern? Are they actually only hitting in a grid? Or is the game just guessing and showing me that? We tested this on a variety of surfaces, from walls to the ground, vehicles, objects, and even enemies, and it all holds up. The answer is that it is indeed only estimating the bullet hits for me, the observer. The grid begins to appear to the observer at around 175 meters, and we tested it all the way out to 1.9 kilometers, and the grid just gets larger and larger and larger. When I held an enemy for him to shoot at a distance of 1.6 kilometers, we could see the grid pattern appearing around me on the ground at my feet. And when I moved the enemy in between those grid points where no bullets could theoretically hit, he shot the enemy with the bullet appearing on my screen to be actually a couple feet away. Because of this, at these distances, it becomes impossible for a spotter to inform the shooter where he's hitting because your observation of the shot may be off by a couple of meters. We decided to go bigger, and I held an enemy at 1.9 kilometers, which is the furthest we could get his bullets to travel. And we could not get the bullet to hit the enemy. At that range, it's really just down to pure luck. As even holding the rifle in the exact same position, shots were hitting all around me in a radius of about 30 meters. Or at least, that's how it was appearing to me. So we tested it thoroughly for several hours to make sure that what we were seeing wasn't a glitch, and to get to the bottom of it. We tested with me as the spotter, we tested with him as the spotter. We tested with weapons other than sniper rifles as well. In this shot here, Zero is aiming at a stack of cardboard boxes at a range of only 200 meters with an MK-14 sniper rifle. When he runs out of ammo, he switches to his M249 and empties that into the wall of boxes as well. Even with these two completely different weapons, one a sniper, the other a light machine gun, the grid stayed spot on. This is because his point of firing and field of view remained the same. Going back to that flashlight analogy, 
He stood in the same place, shining the grid on the boxes, and without moving, turned it off and back on again. As long as he stayed still and fired, the grid of bullets remained the same, no matter how he adjusted his aim or what weapon he used. Now, of course, when he came up to observe the boxes, he saw a mess of about 700 or so bullet holes, but to me, it made this perfect grid with each bullet snapping to the nearest hole. We wanted to carry it over from shooting at walls and static objects to vehicles, enemies, and objects which did have collision physics. Here is a comparison of screenshots of a shelf full of items. On my screen, you clearly see the bullet grid pattern and the objects that he hit. Now look at his screen. Here you see where the bullets actually hit and that different objects were affected. Okay, so this told us that what I'm seeing on my screen, not just the bullet holes, but also what they're hitting is not necessarily what's actually happening, as the game is only rounding off the calculations for me, whereas he's seeing what he accurately hit. Okay, but we still couldn't be satisfied until we tried it out on an enemy. Of course, we knew what that would mean. We'd have to establish a grid position on a wall, and I'd have to maneuver an enemy in between where he was hitting to see if the bullet magically hit the enemy without showing it on my screen. Because, of course, on my screen, the bullets only go through the previous holes already made on the grid, right? Here was our first bit of evidence of this. Here on my screen, you can clearly see the bullet hitting the rebel and not making a bullet hole in the wall. On my end, as the observer, it approximated this as a hit and showed it as a hit, even though the rebel was fine and just kept moving. That's because the bullet didn't actually hit him. The actual bullet physics only applied to the shooter and the target. Okay, so finally we scored a hit on a living target, which perceived as a hit to me, but was actually a miss. Schrodinger's bullet, if you will. But we weren't satisfied. We wanted to clearly see him miss an enemy on my screen, his bullet snapping to the nearest grid point, but to have the enemy actually die, essentially what we wanted to see is a bullet whiz right by a target and him drop dead from nothing. This was our key to knowing if the grid was just projected for the observer or if the bullets were actually snapping to the grid and hitting at those points. Our question was basically, which one of us is it fooling? We knew we need the biggest grid possible, so I'd have the best chance at fitting the enemy in between the shot points, so we started at one kilometer. I held the enemy against the wall the best I could in the blank areas while Zero took the shots. Sure enough, the killing shot appeared to me to go over my right shoulder even though it struck the enemy to my left as seen right here by this blood splatter. This confirmed for us that to the observer of another player shooting, any bullet hits are just approximations. And the further you are from the shooter, the more it just guesses, snapping the bullets to the nearest available grid point. Just as in the further you observe a bullet arc from, the more angular it gets until it's basically just a hexagon streaking through the sky. Okay, so now the question that Zero and I were asking each other literally all day while we were testing this. What does this all mean? Most importantly, it means that no rifle testing can be done in co-op mode. I know this now, so all my future tests will continue to be single player, as they have been all along. It means trying to score that super long shot is all about luck. We were able to score a hit at 1.6 kilometers, but even though I had bullets appearing to hit all around me, we couldn't score a hit at 1.9 kilometers. The bullets are appearing to hit so far apart at greater distances that the observer can't tell within 6 or 7 feet where it's actually hitting. Now, I don't mean to say that Ubisoft got sloppy with the physics. That's just trying to shine some light on the system that's here. This is a system where you can hit a helicopter or an enemy from over a kilometer away, but just don't expect to be able to accurately measure its parameters from another perspective. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and maybe enlightening or at least entertaining. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or in my Discord. The link to my Discord is in the video description. We've tested this for hours, and this was the best and most concise way I could think to put the info we gathered into a video. But we did a lot more testing than I showed here, so let me know if there's anything I missed that I can clear up. Alright guys, that's it for today. It's been a pleasure. I'm Dark Dally, and I will catch you guys next time. This <laughs> is so weird. Right, I'm out of ammo. <laughs> That's me put fucking nearly 700 <laughs> rounds down range at it. <laughs>